All right, welcome everybody, Autumn and Chloe and Daniel and Haru and Leticia and Roberto and our wonderful library staff, Dinah, who's laughing at me <laughs> over there, and Jaden and Hector. Thank you so much for coming to our Friday classes. So uh, go ahead, take it away, guys. What are we doing today? Today we're going to be talking about digital arts and getting started with going from drawing on pencil and paper to drawing on the computer. All right, so welcome everyone to today's webinar, Digital Arts, A Beginner's Guide. So we have a couple of drawing exercises and demonstrations prepared for you today. But before we get to drawing, we wanted to just give you a little bit of information on different free softwares that you can use to get started and a little bit of information on different types of tablets in case you're interested in investing in one. So here we have our mobile applications. So the mobile ones are ones that work on either the phone or a tablet, mobile device. We have Adobe Illustrator Draw and Adobe Sketch. Those two, all you have to do is sign up with an email with Adobe and have a free account and you'll have access to those two apps. Um, Autodesk Sketchbook is the app that we're going to be going over today. It has both a mobile and desktop version. Um, Tayasui Sketches is another drawing app. It has a little bit more uh, pencil and pen tools available than Adobe Illustrator and Sketch. And then Metabank Paint is primarily used for comics and manga. So if you're interested in doing illustration stuff, that's a good one that has templates for making comic book pages. Next, we have our desktop programs. There is Fire Alpaca, uh, Krita, once again, Autodesk Sketchbook, GIMP, and Photopia. Um, GIMP has some animation features as well as Krita, so they're both good for drawing and 2D animation. Fire Alpaca, again, is a more simple version of a drawing app, while GIMP and Krita have more tools and available options. And then Photopia is kind of like Photoshop, but it's a browser-based program. So Photopia, you actually don't need to download it to your computer, you can just use it from your web browser. Next, we have our tablets. So the type of tablet that you might want to look into is going to depend on a couple of things. Um, how invested you are in this pursuing it as a hobby or maybe taking it more seriously. But I would say your most budget friendly tablet is probably starting around $30 and then it ranges up from there. But this type of tablet is a pen tablet which you can see in the picture on the left, this guy is looking at the computer screen while moving his hand on the pencil. So it's a little bit weird. It feels awkward at first because you're not looking down at what you're scribbling. You're looking up and then moving your hand. So it requires some weird hand-eye coordination, but that's the way this tablet works. And there are some that connect with a cable and some that are Bluetooth. So you have those two options. Next, we have a pen computer, which is on the left and a pen display, which is on the right. So if you look at them at a glance, they look the same, right? You can draw directly on the screen, but the main difference between them is that the one on the right has to be connected to a computer to work. So it's basically like a second screen. It doesn't work independently. It has to be connected to a computer, but the one on the left is a standalone device by itself. So you can draw on it and it is a full-fledged computer. It can run programs, it can run browsers, it can do it all. So next we have our mobile tablet. So the difference between this one and the standalone we saw in the previous slide is that the previous one, it has to be connected to a power source at all times. While a mobile tablet, you can take on the go. It's more portable. So if you wanted something more like the size of a regular notebook to take with you everywhere you go, this is a great option for you as well. So now that we've gone over some of the equipment and software, we're gonna jump straight into Autodesk Sketchbook and get you guys familiar with the interface. I'm going to have my reference image because I'm gonna be doing some figure drawing. So when you open up Autodesk Sketchbook for the first time, this is going to be your gallery view where you can see where your previous drawings were. And to create a brand new file, at the very bottom, there is a white plus sign. I'm going to tap on that. And I'm going to click on new sketch. That's going to bring up this other little window. 
Here you can choose the dimensions of how big or small you want your canvas to be. It automatically sets it to the size of the screen that you're working on. So for now, I'm just going to leave it the dimensions that it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. Once I do that, it's going to bring me to my canvas. So I'm currently working on an iPad at the moment. This is the mobile version of the app. So for me to zoom in and out of my canvas, I'm just pinching my fingers on the screen to zoom in and out. So we're gonna go over some of the tools before I start drawing. On the left, we have all our pencils, brushes, and pens. On the right, we have our layers. On the upper right, this little thing right here is called a puck. If you tap on the color circle, it brings up your color wheel. I have one of my colleagues who's gonna dive further into that later. And then in the top center, here we have um, our window to go back to our gallery or save our work or export it. We have our undo and redo arrows next to that. Then we have this little marquee here. This is the selection tool. This is the transform tool. We have the paint bucket, our ruler. It has different types of rulers. We have our symmetry tool, shapes, our perspective stroke. Here we can import an image, our perspective guides, and our text tools. So there's a lot to go on in here, but um, I'm gonna have my colleagues go a little bit deeper into some of these tools because we're each gonna do different activities. So to get started, we're gonna do this figure drawing right here. I have my reference picture on the left and I have my layers on the right. So right now, this little square right here that's highlighted in blue is the layer that I'm currently on. If you tap on the layer, you can go a little bit further and make uh, extra changes and edits to your layer. So I already have a layer selected. I have my pencil brush, and here I can change the size of it, or I can use these little sliders to change the size of it on the side as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and start sketching. So when it comes to figure drawing, one of the things that you wanna do is kind of look at the direction that the body is going and kind of figure out like the curve of the spine in which it's facing. So I'm gonna start out with the head, just a simple circle here. And she's kind of having her chest puffed out in this direction and then her hips go this way. So it's kind of like a curve that I can follow. So I lay that out and then I start to put in the direction of her shoulders and maybe the way her hips are going. So whenever you're drawing a figure, you wanna break it down to very simple geometric forms just to get the silhouette and the shape in there. And of course, this is my eraser tool down here. When I make mistakes, I kind of didn't give her neck for a second. <laughs> and then, for the torso, I'm gonna do kind of like this blocky square shape just to get the torso in. Circle for the abdomen. Remember, this is a sketch, it's very, very loose. And then kind of like a triangle for the pelvis area. I'm gonna use ovals for the legs. And you'll start to kind of see the figure come together. Again, this is very loose and gestural. Another good exercise to do when sketching like this is to time yourself. You can do five minute sketches, 10 minute sketches, and 30 minute sketches. When I was going to school for art, this is something that we would do in figure drawing class. We would time ourselves and that would determine how much detail we would put into the drawing. And of course, timing yourself and getting looser and more comfortable with your sketches will help you become faster and more efficient at drawing. Notice how I'm using circles and lines for the joints. 
and using triangles for her hand. I'm kind of just laying it down. And of course, once you get the general shapes down, you can go on a separate layer on top of this and start to refine it a little bit more. But I kind of don't like how I ran out of space to draw her feet. So I'm going to quickly use the lasso tool, which is this little dotted line square with the arrow and this blue loop-de-loop -loop selected. And I'm going to draw around the figure, select it, and then hit these four arrows over here for the transform tool to be able to move this. I'm going to pinch it, to shrink it a little bit and move it up and hit done. So now I can go in and sketch the feet that I missed. And of course, if you have any questions as I'm sketching, be sure to leave them in the chat and we can answer your questions as we go along. One thing I wanted to mention, Jaden, is that folks are saying that they're not really good at drawing humans and anatomy. Um, do you guys like to draw animals or landscapes? Like, what do you guys like to draw? Some people said they like to draw animals. Some people said anthropomorphic animals, simple I know humans. What that is. <laughs> anthropomorphic is like animals with human-like qualities, like animals that walk upright or humans with animal type features. Those are very popular, especially in like anime <laughs> stuff. So I can see why they like that. Well, luckily for you guys, we're not only going to be doing figure drawing today, we're going to have Dinah doing uh, landscapes and we're going to have Hector teach you guys a little bit about perspective. So you guys will be able to learn a couple of different techniques from here. But even if you were drawing an animal, the same basic principles apply. When you're trying to figure out the anatomy of anything, whether it's an animal or a human, you want to be able to have this understanding of breaking it down to basic shapes. So that's pretty much a sketch for the body. Again, you just have to keep practicing and breaking this down. And one last little exercise I'll show really quick. Just the breakdown of a face. When you're drawing a face, you can start with a circle, add to it here for the head, and you have these lines. So this line going straight down the middle is gonna indicate that the character is facing straight on. And then I put down these lines to get the eyes and the ear level. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Put this line down here for the nose and this for the mouth. So the eyes would go right about here. The nose would go here. And then the mouth would go here. So notice how these lines indicate where the eyebrows go. These lines indicate where the eyes stop. This is where the bottom of the nose touches and this is where the mouth goes. And I know as far as human proportions go, uh, this head that you see right here, humans are eight heads tall. I know that's a little weird to comprehend because humans come in different heights and sizes, but that's also a rule of thumb for like human anatomy 101, going by heads. That's pretty much my little demonstration on figure drawing. I'm going to be passing it over to Dinah now, who's going to show you guys some background painting techniques. So hey guys, um, here we are. We're gonna also be doing um, the iPad. I'm gonna be doing uh, something differently. This is gonna be more landscape. I'm a safe, uh, myself, I'm a painter. So I like to paint a lot of landscapes, a lot of galaxies, a lot of background, things like that. Media that I use, I usually use uh, watercolors. So that's really what I focus on. But today we're gonna be learning obviously sketchbook and we're gonna be doing it digitally. So today I'm gonna to be making just a quick sunset. We're gonna be starting to use the airbrush. I'm gonna to be touching upon some brushes that I'm gonna be using. 
as well as the color wheel. So the first brush that I'm gonna be using is called the Flow Airbrush, as you can see right here, and I'm gonna choose my color. I already chose red, as that's gonna be my beginning. Make sure, if you notice here, I started on a different um, layer. All my other layers here, I just practiced layers that I used earlier today. So I'm gonna leave those there, and I'm gonna start here, this new one right here, okay? First thing, we're gonna do that red. Now the good thing, you see how that's pretty small. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my brush size so I could go ahead and get more. Let me first start with that. And then I'm gonna first, uh, as a sunset, we know that it's very orangey and red. So let me go ahead and bring in some orange. I'm gonna go ahead and use my color wheel here. Now the cool thing about the color wheel is that you could, um, you could either choose like your colors and um, kind of mess around with them from here. This, the HSL stands for hue, um, saturation, and lightness. But I myself like to use the wheel itself. Or you could go to RGB, um, red, green, and blue. Or you even have a little um, color palette that you could create yourself. So let's say I really like this color here, and I could go ahead and just drop it into my color palette so I could come back to it later. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose that orange. I'm still in using the airbrush. And that was a little too much. I'll go ahead and get that a little lighter. Now the opacity here, you could actually play with that as well on the side. So now when I feel satisfied with that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in another layer. Notice that we're gonna be working in different layers here, okay? I'm going to bring in, I want yellow because I'm going to bring in the sun now. It's a little too green, so I'm going to choose that. All right, I need a brighter yellow. All right, now in order to get that perfect circle, I'm going to go ahead and use the drawing styles tool. Ah, now see what I forgot to do was actually to change the tool. So one of the tools keep forgetting to do that. I'm gonna be using is also the fountain pen. So I'm gonna try that again. And you're gonna notice the difference in the outline. I'm gonna increase that. Now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of that and go ahead and start coloring in. So now that my sun is done, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the background. I'm gonna do the, the bottom, the ground. Now I'm gonna go to this other, um, this one's kind of like a, a splatter, I believe. This is what it's called, splatter paint. So I'm gonna be using this one, the splatter paint three. And I'm gonna change that color back to black. Now again, you could go ahead and use your hands to pinch and zoom in and zoom out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in very quickly. This is where we're gonna um, place our, our tree. So this is what we want it. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's the ground, of course, right? Okay, now that I'm done with that, let me go ahead and create another layer. This layer I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna be using the draw styles tool as well. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on that layer and I'm gonna bring in the pen and I wanna change it back to red. Now I'm gonna use the red that I want, that I'm using here. So I'm bringing in the color picker or the dropper and I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle and I'm gonna cover the, the bottom of that. I'm gonna go ahead and color this in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use my eraser. I'm gonna be bringing in the cashmere eraser and I'm gonna go back to this what I want to do, I'm softening that, um, I'm go ahead and increase that, bring in the opacity, kind of like 
erasing the bit of at the bottom, which brings up this like um, brightness in the sun. So I'm gonna go back to the airbrush. I'm gonna bring in that orange again, because now I wanna get rid of this horizon right here. Oops, it's not doing it. There we go. There we go. Because you see I have that harsh line there. I don't want that. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to bring in the airbrush. And reduce the opacity and the size as well. Go ahead and it, it, there's a lot of going back and forth between these um, these uh, tools. So it's really as you go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that red back again, use the airbrush, and really get in there to really, I don't want to see that perfect line there, right? So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and bring that yellow, because I want to add some yellow to it with the airbrush or the opacity. Oops. I'm really going to try to bring out more of the sun. You can notice the reflection in the bottom. So that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna bring this to the top. Bring more of that. Go ahead and bring in the red. You hear the tapping is just me tapping away here over here so i'm just trying to cover up the bottom and the of the uh, sun and bring more of that orange there so now that i'm happy with that i'm gonna go ahead and bring my my pen again and i'm gonna make some like a little bit of like the reflection from the sun that's a little too wide, so let's go down. And I know that it looks ugly, but give me just one minute and you'll understand what I'm trying to do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and back into my library and I'm gonna bring in this other cool brush. It's called a smudge brush. I love this thing, it is amazing. Let's go ahead and smudge that and it does exactly what it tells you. Go ahead and smudge that quick. It's actually really yes. amazing how realistic that looks. You, you wouldn't even think that that's digital. Right? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring in another orange, but this one I want it to be more of like a brick orange. I'm gonna still be using my pen. And I kind of don't like that orange now. I'm very picky. So, let's see. This is just to give a few of the details and highlights. So that it'll look, gives it more cool details and it looks more um, like a real sunset. So I'm gonna bring back that, that smudge tool. And we do the same. So I have this um, palm tree already done. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to use the transform tool to move him around. Notice this palm tree is in, uh, in this layer, it's in the bottom, so I'm going to want to move it to the top. I'm going to delete this layer here. So I already did this palm tree, I already had it ready to go because it takes me a while to create the palm tree. I'm 
and obviously you need to be on the layer that you're trying to move. If not, it's not going to work. So let me go ahead and bring that palm tree there. Um, then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna actually duplicate this layer again and go back to my transform tool, take out the other one and bring it right in here. Go ahead and I feel that should be enough. Now I'm gonna go and bring in another tool. So this is the, okay, I can't pronounce this one. It's the Anomen, Anemone something splatter tool. And it's really, it started drying. I need to change that color. So let's go back in here. So what I'm trying to give it is that, that grassy look at the front, you know, doesn't need to be perfect. And final tool that I'm going to be using today is this cool shape one. It's called Feathery Brush Set. And it does exactly what it says. You could do this cool feather grass look at the end. Maybe I don't like that one. Okay, now I did notice here that like my palm tree, if you guys noticed, the palm tree got cut off. So now I have to go back and um, be able to fix that. And maybe I want to use the technical pencil, reduce the size on that, really extend the palm tree. Okay, and I'll do the same over here, really extend that palm tree, just to, just to not leave it cut off. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and use the predictive stroke tool. And with my pen, I'm going to minimize the size. I'm going to go ahead and make these, huh, that one, I didn't like that bird, it was too small and weird. Also, as an artist, you're going to be your biggest critic. Um, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just you. You're just practicing. This is, this is my first week on this app. So yeah, and I'm really liking it. And I really appreciate uh, Jaden uh, and Hector for introducing me to it. Um, so yeah, this is my first try, guys. And I hope you guys liked it and enjoyed that. All right, thank you so much, Dinah, for that wonderful demonstration. I'm gonna be using my laptop. Yeah, this is called Autodesk Sketchbook. And we just saw uh, Dinah and Jaden use the mobile version. Uh, so they use an iPad for both examples. I'm gonna go over a little bit of the interface. Uh, it looks a little bit different than the mobile version, but just like the other ones that they showed us, on the left side, we have the tools. So we have all the different brushes. And you also see two little buttons right here at the top. The first one uh, allows you to make adjustments such as increase the size and also adjust the opacity. And some of the, um, the brushes or the tools that you use have advanced features. So you can control uh, the amount of uh, size um, when you apply the pressure, if you have a pressure sensitive tablet, the spacing, the angle of the pen or the marker. So that's the first little button, the, the brush properties. The next one on the right brings up the brush layer. And this one goes way into all the different brushes and tools that you get. And all of these come with the, uh, with the program. There are some more. If you go to window and there's a sketchbook extras right here, there are some extra brushes. For example, if you wanted to use some for uh, fur for animals, or to do uh, automobiles and stuff. They have different markers and you can download them by clicking on this little button right here. And uh, some people who, uh, who created these brushes also have a lesson. So if you click learn more, it takes you to the website so that you can learn more about the, um, the tools and they walk you through the process of following the, the examples. So that's really good. I'm actually gonna show you guys, I know that um, 
some of you say that they have a hard time drawing like the human figure or any kind of figure. Uh, I'm going to be covering some, some tools that are going to help you with that. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to insert uh, an image as a guide. So I'm going to go to where it says file, add image. And I already have an image on my uh, desktop. So I'm going to open this one, which I created a long time ago. Um, and I did it with blue pencil, which is similar to a regular pencil, but the, it does it in blue. And the reason why I did that is because if you try to photocopy uh, a document using a, a regular photocopier, anything that is in blue is not going to come out. So it makes it easy to trace over the image. Now, when you import the, the, the image, and it can be a photograph, it can be a sketch that you've already done, or that you either scan to your computer or that you um, took a picture on your phone and transferred it to your computer. Uh, it, it comes with this little uh, toolbar right here. So the first thing you can do when you click on the outside ring, you can move the image, right? So you can adjust that. Uh, the one down here next, you can rotate your image. Then the one in the center, you can scale the image. So I'm gonna scale it down and rotate it a little bit. And this is a little helicopter that I did a while back. And this one allows you to stretch the image. This one I don't, I don't use a lot. If you lose your little um, guide, you can always bring it back by pressing the, um, the space bar. So let me rotate this. That looks pretty good. And then when you're done, you can click return and it'll save it on that position. So on your right side of the, um, the screen, you see all the layers. If you don't see this little layer panel, you can come to the window and select layer editor. And that will bring this little uh, panel right here. Um, the good thing about working with layers is like we mentioned in, in the previous um, lessons is that you can work independently on each element. So I'm going to create um, a new layer uh, by clicking on this little plus sign and it's gonna go immediately on top because I don't want to draw directly on my guide. As a matter of fact, there's a little lock right here. So I'm going to click on that so that it doesn't move and I can by mistake draw on it and it's going to stay there. Okay, so let me go to the layer over here on the top. And what I'm going to be doing is basically tracing over the lines. Now to zoom in and zoom out, uh, an easy way to do it instead of using the little zoom tool over here is to press and hold the space bar and it brings you this little uh, icon and then you can literally click and drag up to zoom in or click and drag down to zoom out. So that's a really useful tool and you can also move it around. You, you get this little hand icon and you can adjust your image so that you, it makes it easy for you to, to draw. Now, if I try to draw directly by hand, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, new to this. So when I try to draw, you see there's a little bit of jagged uh, to the a little jagged line. Um, there are some tools that will help you with that and I'm going to go over that. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna reduce the size of the, um, of the brush and you can do that by clicking on this little icon and drag into your left that reduces the size. Or if you have uh, your keyboard handy, you can use the open and close brackets. So if you use the opening bracket, uh, it reduces the size of the, uh, the brush. And if you use the closing bracket, it increases the size of the brush. And then the next one right here to the left, what that does, it uh, basically allows you to change the color of the brush. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep the black. Um, now I'm gonna be talking about the, uh, these tools, the perspective tools. So the first one is the ruler. And you can either click on this little icon or press R for ruler. So when you press R, it brings you this little uh, tool right over here on the screen. Um, so we're gonna go over these little buttons. The bottom one allows you to control the bottom part of the, the ruler and the top allows you to control the top part of the ruler so you can adjust the angles. This one right here, which has a little circle, empty circle, allows you to move the ruler so you can adjust it. And then by clicking on the X, uh, you can remove it. Or you can also just press the, uh, the R button again. You know, if I press it, it goes away. If I press it back, the R button, it brings it back. So once I have the ruler, I can literally click and drag. And as you can see, I do a straight line. Now you can easily move it to another part of your subject. 
let me do this one right over here and you can move it kind of like there let me see okay so that's another straight line uh, i'm gonna delete that just to show you a different tool let me x out of that so that's the regular uh, ruler and it help you out especially you know for example like this part of the illustration that i did the the little blade of the of the um, helicopter it makes it super easy to do straight lines so if you have a hard time doing straight lines you see how easy it is to use this tool and again press r to remove it the second one is similar but it helps you do circles it's the ellipse uh, tool and as you can see when you click on it or if you click the e on your keyboard it brings up this uh, little screen menu and the first button at the top allows you to stretch and create a perfect circle or more of an oval shape. You can increase and decrease the size of the uh, circle or the oval with the left button. You can also rotate it with this one on the right. And of course you can click away from with it uh, from the X button. So let me move this to this part of the, the illustration. So you put it right on top of your um, object and literally again, just click and draw. And that makes it super easy to do curved objects. Um, you might want to play around a little bit to make sure that it's, it does it perfectly or to your content. And again, don't be afraid if you make a mistake, uh, you can always undo. So com Command or Control Z will undo it um, and it'll take it away. So those are two tools. There's also another one that helps you draw uh, curved um, lines and this is called the French curves. Now there are different French curves or so different designs of French curves. And you can switch between them by clicking on the topmost button right here at the top. There's different um, French curves. So let me see if I can use this one, for example. And again, the same way. You can rot uh, rotate uh, left to right on this one, the top one. You can increase and decrease the size on the left handle. And you can rotate it by clicking on this button. So let me see if this works. It might not be perfect, but it'll show um, a little bit of how you use it. And again, I'm just showing this for example. You could uh, use uh, some of the other tools I'm gonna be doing later on to, uh, to create your uh, illustrations. So once you set it up and align to your uh, outline or your sketch, you again, just click and drag. And you see how easy it is to make the curve of that one. And again, just click the X button when you're done. Um, Another uh, useful tool is the perspective tool, and I'm only gonna show you one of them because when you click on this button, you have your one point perspective, uh, two point perspective, three point perspective, and uh, this one, which is like um, a, a circular or fisheye mode. So I'm gonna use the three point perspective and I'm, let me actually press the space bar to zoom out. All right, so bring the perspective again, and you see it has these, uh, points, let me close this little. So it has a point um, on, the, on the bottom has two points. That's the horizon line or basically your point of view. And over there at the, at the back, this is called, it's called the vanishing point. So imagine a three point uh, perspective if you're stopping right on top of a railroad track and you look all the way down to the end, um, the lines on the rails, look like they're vanishing to a single point all the way into the to the horizon. So that's the, the vanishing point. That's this little button. And again, you can move it and position it anywhere that you like. And you can also move the, uh, the other points in your, um, in your perspective. And then basically what it allows you to do is um, it helps you to draw the object in perspective, or at least you can uh, use the, the rulers to make sure that your object is in the proper perspective. Another useful tool is the symmetry tool. And um, what that allows you to do is kind to mirror over the object. So if I use it, uh, you basically can draw, and I'm, let me move it to the side so you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, let's say that I wanted to draw a heart and you're, you wanna make sure that it's uh, properly on both sides. So you basically, whatever you draw on the right side or the left side will be mirrored on the opposite side. Uh, there's also a way to do it up and down or uh, multiple angles. So I'm just gonna use the vertical one. And let me draw like a little heart. 
and then it basically duplicates whatever's on this side. So that's a really useful tool. Let me undo that um, for drawing things that are perfectly identical on both sides. Let me take that away again by clicking on the button. All right. So the other tool is this one right over here. And this, this tool is really, really useful for those of us who have a hard time drawing straight lines. This is called the steady stroke and it basically helps you create smooth lines. So I'm going to click on that and you have a little slider bar right here in the bottom. You can do all the way to 200 or zero. Zero, of course, is natural. So however you draw, it's gonna reproduce it exactly uh, the same way on screen digitally. But if you use the little slider, the more you move it up, it basically allows you to create smooth lines. And you can literally draw up perfectly. And what it removes is that little jittery motion uh, that your hand might do when you're first starting out if you're not really comfortable with the pen. Uh, so it helps you create super smooth lines. That's really cool. Yeah, that's like a really nice assistant tool. So that's a really, really fantastic tool for um, getting used to using this program. It helps you out a lot tremendously, which is called the predictive stroke. So when you click on it, uh, you're able to draw uh, the, the line. And if you're a little bit uh, uneven, it smooths it out for you. So that's also really useful to do uh, steady lines. Those are all the different tools that I'm going to be showing as far as perspective. Uh, just wanted to sh uh, showcase some other ones right here in the top uh, of the menu bar. There's also this little button right here. This is the Copic library. So let me close this one. And Copic is basically a brand of uh, markers. Um, they're a little bit uh, expensive because they're used professionally. But the cool thing is that the same colors and style that they use are mirrored on this digital program. And they have two different ones. They have illustration sets and design sets. And the cool thing is like, if you notice when you click on a particular color, it gives you like basically different shades of that uh, color, which are complementary and will help you create your design and have like a unified look to that design. Well, that's pretty much for what we have for today for the illustration. Uh, and just to show you what it looks like after I've done all the work here, um, let me open up like one of the uh, compositions at the end. This is what it will look like after I've done all the changes. So this I created right before the, the meeting. And um, let me show you the layers. So I, I have different elements on the layers. And the cool thing is you can work independently. For example, if I wanted to remove the outline, I just click on the the particular outline for the layer. Uh, one thing I recommend is that you would do your colors on a separate layer so that if you ever want to change uh, the colors, you don't have to disrupt your entire illustration. So you have your colors. You also have a layer for the background. So all the different elements are on individual uh, layers. Okay, uh, that pretty much concludes my part of the presentation. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them on, on the chat. This is very cool. I'll, I'm gonna let you guys talk about what we're having next week, but I really like this. I love, I love the fact that you're able to use this uh, free app and, and have access to some really great tools. So do we have any questions? I know I missed a lot of the chat. Just <laughs> it was in there. Yeah, I was trying to keep up with everyone. <laughs> yeah, you guys are you know, very, just look at these staff. I mean, you guys are so talented. You have so many different skill sets. So what do we have next week? What's coming up next week? So next week, we actually have a voice acting webinar. So I know there's a lot of anime fans in the chat. So if you guys are interested in that, we're going to be teaching you guys some basic acting techniques and how to do voiceover for your characters. Drama. Drama. Yes, <laughs> we like the drama. <laughs> yes. Um, guys, I noticed that you guys were also talking amongst yourselves that, um, you know, I want you guys to know that you need to practice, 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 practice. That's just it. Like, don't compare yourself to, to us. Don't compare yourself to any other artist. Everybody's at different levels and at different stages and everybody focuses on uh, different um, mediums. So like I said, this is my first time using this app and I still want to continue working on it because I'm not perfect at all. 
Um, so just letting you guys know the possibilities are endless. So what advice do you guys have for those people who are saying they're terrible at drawing, you know, the human body and animals, they're having trouble with that? I would say drawing from observation is your best bet because that really helps. Um, yeah. And there's no shame in using reference. Like don't ever feel like it's like you're cheating or anything like that. Like, please use reference. So be, be specific, what does that mean to you? Drawing from observation using reference means that you have the, the object or a picture to look at in front of you and you're looking back on it to know how to draw the pose and where to place the elements of your drawing. Because like, let's say I mentioned earlier in the chat, I'm not very good at drawing animals. That's something that I need to work on. But um, if I want to draw a dog, I, I can't draw a dog off the top of my head from memory because I don't know what the anatomy of a dog looks like just in my brain. I have to look at one to draw one. So yeah. if you want to draw an animal, just have it in front of you and just draw what you see. You know, break it down to its basic shape, start with circles and lines and make it very geometric and then just slowly start filling it in. I know I make it sound like it's easier said than done, but it, it, you really just have to keep doing it every day. And usually the more frequently you do it, the quicker you'll see improvement, I promise you. I didn't start drawing until I was, like Jaden, like pretty much grew up drawing. I didn't discover that I like to do, like paint and draw until I was like in my 20s. So, and you guys are like, what, like, 12 or something like that or I'm not sure how old you are but um you know that was that was a late bloomer into my art form because I did mostly like music and theater and I acted and all that stuff so um but yeah don't give up on it it's a lot of fun so I don't know if you guys mind but I'd like to share that last one that I was working on Marlon yeah go for it all right let me go ahead and quickly before we leave, but um, it's something that I'm working on right now. And just to let you guys know, I just started this week, so I can't wait to continue and see wow. um, my improvement and how I'm going to work that. So don't give up, guys. Just have my own little gallery here. I've been working on some stuff. So this is the first one I did, um, and it was, again, just this week, so... Anyways, guys. My pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. And we will certainly see you next week. Stay tuned to our You Make Miami Facebook page and our Instagram. And that way you can register and log in for our next class. Voice over acting.